Hello. Hi, is this Ronnie? Yeah. All right. Well, let me do the official introduction, ladies and gentlemen. We're very excited to welcome our featured guest for this evening. He is an actor, a comedian, and he's done a little bit of everything. The one and only Mr. Ronnie Shell. You're on the air with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome. How are you doing? We're good. I grew up with you, good. Ronnie, yeah, enjoying you on the many things that you've done. And uh, oh, good. you've often said that you were America's slowest rising comedian, <laughs> but I want to tell you, yeah. as of now, knowing where we look at you and how we speak, you are a uh, a TV legend. Can you still be a legend and say you're slowest rising? Well, no, I, I'm now America's slowest rising old comedian. That's how I tell myself, do I? I'm, I'm the last one left <laughs> of my crowd, to be honest with you. Well, it was a great cast, and I know you're talking about Gober Pyle, I believe. And the thing that really struck me is I realized during uh, studying for the show with my notes and stuff that there must have been a mm-hmm. really great friendship there because after the Gomer Pyle show, did you not do the Jim Neighbors Variety Hour with Frank Sutton? Well, Jim, yeah, Jim and I went back uh, uh, before uh, the uh, uh, Gomer. Uh, Gomer Pyle show even started. Uh, Jim, I, uh, I'm from San Francisco, and I, Jim was working a nightclub uh, that we all started in, and uh, I got to, I, I was down there, and I got to know him, and mm-hmm. and so we remained very close friends. He was like an uh, older brother to me, to be honest with you. Wow, it was so surprising to me when I first got to know Jim Neighbors, is you would hear him talking like the hillbilly that he always portrayed, and then he would sing, and all of a sudden he was Robert Goulet. I mean, did that surprise you at That's first? True. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, I, I, and I was surprised when when uh, my manager, uh, uh, the lead Dick Link, who also handled Andy Griffith, uh, they went out to see him at a place in Santa Monica called The Horn. Mm-hmm. And when it was over, uh, Andy said, well, I, I can't figure out. I mean, I mean I, I, whatever he does, he's great at it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now you mentioned Andy Griffith. Now, you actually were on the Andy Griffith show, right? Am I correct? Yeah, I did a couple episodes. Uh-huh. I, uh, uh, I I think the second year and the and the last year, yeah, the last uh-huh. year, I did uh, uh, some stuff with him. I knew Andy, too, because okay. uh, I, I worked nightclub a lot, and... Vegas, and uh, I went on a, a little tour with Andy a couple of times, and uh, we, I got to know him pretty well. So. Now, now, you know, Ronnie, of course, everybody always knows you from Gomer Pyle USMC and things like that, but you huh? have such this huh? humongous amount of work. Uh, it, does it ever bother you yeah. that some little gems, like, I'm sorry, I absolutely love Good Morning World, does it ever bother you that those aren't brought up as much? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were the one. Yeah, the one. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> the problem was I, I, the show was really ahead of its time. Uh, I liked it. That's my defense. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> what happened was uh, when we started our show, uh, I, th- I think it was Tuesday night, NBC started first run movies for the first time mm-hmm. on television. So uh, everyone in America would look down at their their video log and say, well, who should we watch tonight? Ronnie Schell or Cary Grant? And uh, that's how that's how we lasted a, a season and a half. But uh, out, of, out, of the, out of that came uh, the girl who played my uh, uh, girlfriend, uh, Goldie Hawn. Yeah, how about that? Whatever happened to her? I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 believe, don't know. I believe that... I try. Well, go ahead. I, I believe that was before laughing, wasn't it, that she did that show? Yeah. You're absolutely right. It was, uh, she had, uh, the first thing she did, she was a go-go dancer out of Baltimore. Mm. And she, she came and did an Andy Griffith special. And that's where uh, they discovered her. But they didn't quite, we got her first. Uh, and she signed to do uh, a Good Morning World and played my girlfriend. And uh, then when that was over, that's when she did laugh in. Uh, I have a sort of a, a weird story. Go ahead. After about three, and well, I had after about three weeks of doing the show. We used to rehearse a lot, and and uh, Sandy, that was her name, Sandy uh, Goldie, did not like to rehearse, uh, I and mean, she she thought she'd get stale or something like that. So after about the third week, she we were rehearsing, and she said, "Well, I, uh, let's not do this again. I I I, I got it down good enough." 
And I said, I said to her, Goldie, let me tell you something. You should watch me. I've been in the business four years. I am a pro. I know what's going on, and you don't know what's going on. You're you're you're, you're making a mistake by not working harder. Believe me, I know this. You'll never make it big. <laughs> a year and a half, a, a year and a half later, she won the Academy Award for Cactus Flower, and I I found out working some some hole in Omaha. And, and you know, she obviously. Uh, maybe didn't like to rehearse whatever or she found the secret yeah. of her success because she was successful by playing stupid <laughs> so you're absolutely right you're absolutely right she and, not a, and she was very bright she the, there very you go bright. she 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 brought then, uh, go ahead I'm I, was, sorry. I was gonna no, that's okay i was gonna say she brought stupid to a new art form i mean <laughs> she sure did she wow. sure did she was she was a gem well she still is i i uh when i run into her uh uh, Kurt, you know, Kurt Russell. Mm -hmm. Right. I got to know him too because the first uh, Disney movie, I did six Disney movies and the first one I did was The Strongest Men in the World. Right. And, and I got to know Kurt pretty well and so every time I see them, I, uh, I you know, I immediately strike up the friendship again and we, uh, we chat about uh, things that happened since then and uh, uh, so, you know, I've, it's been, it was a warm. It's been a warm relationship. Well, that's Actually, great. For both of them. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it, it, a great show with, with a great cast, and it, it's really Hello? too bad it didn't last longer. I want you to know. I don't know if you know this or not. Do you know that Good Morning World is on Amazon Prime? I did not know that. Yeah. I know it's been playing around. It was on uh, some other uh, uh, antenna mm -hmm. TV. Right. Sure, it was on there for a while, and. Uh, yeah, I guess it, it, you can get it if you want to watch it. Uh, I, I, uh, I occasionally run into it uh, with the channels, you know, going up and down, and and, and it, I, I, I think it's very well done. Yes. You know, they are our. our our uh, main director was Carl Reiner. Yeah, and you know, you can tell. You uh, can totally see the Dick Van Dyke show in yeah. there. I mean, his stuff. Uh, yeah, another right, yeah. another cast member we wanted to mention because uh, the other host here is my daughter, and she really got a kick out of him. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Picky, Picky, Picky. <laughs> which is... Mr. Billy DeWolf. <laughs> That's true. Billy, Billy was Picky, Picky, Picky. <laughs> and uh, uh, off the record, he... he, he 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 didn't. Uh, uh, he, we were great friends, but he didn't care for Joby Baker, my co-star, because Joby had a lot of trouble. Not his fault, because Joby was a good actor. Mm -hmm. But he, he Joby could not remember lines if there was a live audience. <laughs> in so, this is true, and so uh, we had a terrible time of it. And every time he would go up, so to speak, you know. Forget his lines. Uh, you, you could hear uh, Mr. DeWolf in the background going, "Wow!" <laughs> just <laughs> protesting. <laughs> so, uh, so, and, and of course, uh, he, he wore a, a, a toupee, and uh, he would come to the the set sometime and say, "Well, listen, Mr. Shell, I'm going over now and get my haircut. I don't know whether I'll go with it or send it over." <laughs> <laughs> Wow! Well, well, he had quite a quite a career as uh, as an actor for Paramount. You know, yeah. many 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 movies. Yeah. Well, and I, I best think friend, I, I think he definitely was was uh, a great portrayal of a radio station manager because I've had many managers like him. Yeah. And, and, it, and yeah, I, so I guess you studied uh, radio. I did. Did you not start calling into your friend show? And then when you got Good Morning World, did you not like do uh, some shifts at radio stations to study for that? Well, I never actually had uh, any uh, formal study of radio, but when I started it in the Bay Area, I, I used to do a, a, a show up there with a, a very popular uh, radio personality named Don Sherwood, mm -hmm. and uh, I would write material for him and, and appear on his, he had a television show up there too, and I'd, I'd, I'd do uh, bits, and, and that's how I sort of got, got into that mode. Yeah. And so by the time that we got and the other stuff, I, I was well, uh, fairly well prepared. Then I was uh, on uh, Rick Dees. Remember Rick? Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Love him. Whatever happened to Rick Dees? That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> I don't, after he did Disco Duck, he just became a, a radio legend, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, he we were good friends, too. And I, for 
14 years here in L.A., I played his, uh, on the radio, played his agent, mm. Bernie Shelley, from Possessive Artists. And uh, my, 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 my hook was uh, every time I'd call him, or he'd call me, I'd say, oh, hi, hi, hi uh, Rick, listen, I've got a bigger name on the other line. Hold on just a minute. Uh, <laughs> Phil, uh, Phil, tell Bobby Sherman I'll get back to him, but it was always somebody who would <laughs> and pass their high stature. <laughs> With apologies to Bobby Sherman, I guess he's still around. I, I think it's anyway. funny you mentioned that, that you played his agent in a comedy prank thing on the radio because uh, were you not uh, the agent of Danny Thomas' daughter, that girl on, on the, that girl show, Marlo Thomas? Yes. I played Harvey Peck in a number of, uh, I don't know how many I did, but I, at least three episodes that I played her, yeah, agent, Harvey Peck. Uh, so I was ready for that, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you had an interesting career, Ronnie, in the fact that you you worked with all these contemporary, up-and-coming, genius comedians. Yes. But you also yes. got a chance to work with a lot of legends. Now, one of the, the early things you did is, were you, correct me if I'm wrong, were you actually on You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx? Uh, September 1959. I was still a college student in San Francisco, and uh, what happened was uh, George Fenneman, the announcer for Groucho. Yes. Well, Groucho sent uh, George Fenneman up to San Francisco, where I was do uh, working at the Purple Onion with a another uh, very talented comedian, uh, Phyllis Diller. Mm. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and, and, and the uh, producer said, see if you can book Phyllis for our show. So George went up there, and uh, I got to know him in you know in the hallway and everything like that. And then when he uh, Phyllis did, he signed Phyllis, and she was on the next week. And but he liked me too, and he said, "How about you? Would you like to do the show?" And I said, "Sure." So that's how I got on uh, on a on, on the Groucho Marx show, September nineteen fifty nine. Now, what was that production atmosphere kind of like? Because everybody just assumes that you know Groucho ad libs and is kind of was kind of a loose cannon. What was the man really like? He was a loose cannon, but he was very nice to me. And every once in a while, he would say a gem of a punchline, and and in the back of the contestant, uh, there was a, a screen, and his ad libs were put on the screen. Ah. Well, there you go. Oh, yeah. Every one, not all of them, but 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 you know enough to. And I remember uh, talking to the producer, John Goodell was his name, and I said uh, before I did the show, and I said, "Now listen, uh, I'm a comedian, so I'm going to be pretty funny. So uh, just grouch your mind." And Goodell said, "Well, let me tell you something. I will tell you. You can do what you want, do anything, but remember this." This this show is about Groucho, and it's <laughs> on film, and we can easily cut out your your jokes. <laughs> so I was I wasn't that funny on the show, but I you know I, I guess the secret word and the duck fell down, and I got six hundred dollars. Well, go. there you go. Right. <laughs> well, I, I know I, I read you said in an interview one time because you used to you know mm -hmm. hang out with the uh, Adam Twelve show, which was produced by Jack Webb. And you had made a statement, because everybody's always like, what was this person like? And you said that Jack Webb was nice if he was drunk, but not so nice when he wasn't Absolutely. Drunk. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he did a whole turnabout. He would, When he was drunk, he was the nicest guy in the world. But when he was sober, <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> don't, don't, uh, don't go around him. Wow. Which is just the opposite of, of, of you know, the stars we know that are, have that reputation of being nasty when they're drunk right. uh, for, for, I remember the guy who wrote uh, I can't think of it a very famous accentuate the positive a song and anyway and he, he would get drunk and then he'd be mean so a lot of friends would come up and say hi hey let's go out for a drink he said don't don't hang around me please wow. leave wow. I've already started you know the, the would, people you know, that you think are mean or not let me guess I'll bet you Frank yeah. Sutton was the nicest guy ever Nice guy, yeah, yeah, very nice, very nice. We got along good. He, uh, he, uh, the only thing, but he was a first class professional, and uh, he always knew his lines, and was always, you know, open for suggestions and everything like that. Uh, the pro if if there was a problem, which later 
with him was that he smoked 18 uh, Brazilian cigars every day wow. and inhaled and about 24 cups of black coffee. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, to me, that that's affected him later when he had a heart attack and passed on. Yeah. 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 Well, he was doing a show in, uh, in uh, Freeport, Louisiana, and he was in the dressing room and just keeled over. Well, 50, I might add. 50. That's wow, young. That's so sad. That's wow. Now, you know, before we before we wrap up here, though, Ronnie, I, I have to ask you because... Oh, no, I'm going to save... I'm going to stay for another hour. Okay. So you guys will get back. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But, uh, uh, what were you going to say? But I have to ask you because obviously, you know, the acting career and everything, but you've done a, a lot of voiceover work. I personally, I guess you yeah. would consider it voiceover work. I personally love when you voiced the cat in the cat from outer space. That was my personal favorite. Thank you. <laughs> yes. But, Thank but, you. But Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Got you. To Thank work? you. Yeah, I, I, that, was, that was a thrill. What happened, and I'm also in the film. As yes. a sergeant, yeah. Uh, but they cha they changed my voice, my regular voice, because they they, they didn't want the kids to think, "Hey, wait a minute, that's the cat. How come his brother's talking <laughs> that way?" So so that's not my voice you hear on camera, me. Right. But what happened was, uh, we filmed for fourteen weeks. That was a great great film set, and. Uh, <laughs> uh, and they, what they planned on doing was hiring somebody at the end of the, uh, the film to do the voice of the cat. Right. And in the meantime, I was temporary. The temporary, you know, I would do the voice of the cat and everything. And after the 14th week, the, the agent, uh, the director turned to me and said, you've been doing this before. Why don't you do the voice? <laughs> and I said, oh, really? I'm like, so that's what happened. Well, I well, my cats voice. love the movie, and they said that you're the only one they've ever heard do it right. So, <laughs> who said that? My cats did. Both of my cats love that film. Oh, God, God bless your cat. They can totally God understand you. And then you did all these great yeah. commercials. As we end here, I got to talk about Don Adams. Now, you actually set Don Adams up on a date. Oh well, <laughs> I, yeah, I did. Uh, <laughs> what happened was I was still living in San Francisco, and Don was a divorcee he had about I don't know how many wives but anyway <laughs> I got to know him because I, I knew most of the comedians and, and I knew uh, I was very good friends with uh, Don Rickle uh, Don, Don Adams and Don Rickle and, 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 and so he was coming to the uh, work a place called the Hunger in San Francisco mm -hmm. and before he, he uh, came up I was out and he said listen Ron by the way do you know where he got that voice where I'm dying Mr. Inspector on the night of fifteen, you know that voice, right. that yeah. voice. You know where he got this? Yeah. Where? That, if you can remember, that was the voice of William Powell in the Thin Man. Oh yeah. And if you, if you, back, if you go back and see those movies, those old movies, you're like, Inspector on the night of fifteen, the and that's Don Adams. <laughs> Don Adams picked that up from uh, from uh, 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 William Powell. Wow. But anyway, so I said to him, I said to him. Uh, oh, you're coming to San Francisco? He said, yeah, I'm going to work the hungry eye, Ronnie. I don't have, have no, any women up there, but I'm available. <laughs> I said, okay, I'm going to uh, fix you up with a, a, a date. And uh, this, well, excuse me for what I'm going to say, but I said, this woman will do anything and everything. <laughs> and he said, okay, fix me up. <laughs> so uh, I couldn't get, I couldn't get the, the, the ladies I wanted but uh, I did find, uh, believe it or not, uh, somebody's mother. <laughs> and she, she was rather attractive, but she was old up there. <laughs> so Don Adams comes up, and I said, well, and so he went out with her. He was a gentleman. He went out with her. And the next day he said, everything and anything, huh? I said, yes. <laughs> he never let me forget that. Wow. That was my pitching up of, of Don Adams. Well, he might, he must have known that you knew all the women because you were kind of a rock star in a way because you hung out with the Swing and Kingston Trio, <laughs> who I love the oh, Kingston yeah, Trio. That, yes, yes. I, yes. I used to get their I used to get their runoffs. <laughs> I mean, um, every time uh, uh, you know the women were crazy about them, yeah. and they it was college a lot of college concerts, and uh, every time. Uh, uh, you know, they had so many women that they would. Uh, I wasn't married at the time, and so they would say, "Robbie, ha take care of this girl," and, and then I would get 
the date. There, there you go. <laughs> they, they, they appreciate they, popular, they appreciated you being popular, on the but. they appreciated you being on the bill with them, and and you can hear you on their albums introducing them, and and yeah. you, even wrote lighter well, like, notes. So. Like well, I liked I wrote the lighter notes for a college concert, which they did at Boyce Hall here in L.A. Uh, that's a, uh, yeah, Boyce Hall. That's a UCLA, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Anyway, uh, and in that I introduced a trio. Uh, and, and I think it's something like I'd like to introduce you three young men of who I've had the pleasure of working with for the last uh, six months. And I love the way they sing, and they like the way I do their shirts. <laughs> Here is Nick, Bob, John, the kicks the trick. Well, they left that in the album. Wow! So after it was released, and it was big, big, big bestseller. So after it was released, I said, rightfully so, like, this is my first comedy album. I've sold over a million copies. Wow. wow! Wow! There you go. And all, Very all true. Is, all is history, right? Technically. <laughs> so no, I no. I, I, I was very visual, so I never did a uh, uh, a comedy album. Mm-hmm. But uh, I took credit for uh, that little introduction as being my no, it counts. My I debut. think it counts. <laughs> Absolutely, it definitely counts. Well, I, I love right. the fact that that you're still hanging in there and uh, you're doing good. And I know you're doing like some chats with people on on your Facebook page to where you're coming in and answering questions. That's always fun for the fans. Oh yeah. Now well, the- I I, uh, I appreciate it. I, I I didn't get the question you that I usually get, which is who do, in your history who do you think is the funniest person? that you ever worked with. Okay. And? and uh, but, well, you haven't asked me yet. Well, who do you think the funniest person is that you ever worked with? Well, funny you ask me. <laughs> I, 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 I uh, talked about that a lot. And uh, I've come to the conclusion that the funniest man who ever was alive for me was uh, Don Rickles. Yeah. Yes. He was just a, a genius. Now, a lot of people say, what about, because I did Mark and Mindy. I did that sure. show, too. And uh, and Robin Williams was a genius, but he, he yeah, to me, a comedian has to have some personality. Right. Mm-hmm. And to me, uh, uh, I loved uh, uh, Robin, except he would, uh, but you could, he'd walk out of stage you don't know until he starts doing all these fantastic bits. But Rickles, the minute he walks out, you start laughing because he's always going to destroy you. <laughs> so that was my—he was—he was my favorite. With a, a short, uh, uh, Jonathan Winters was second, I think. Oh. And they were all funny. They were all funny. I'll be honest. With you. I was going to say you, like your to your friend Jerry Van Dyke might have been a little bit upset with hearing that opinion. Best man at my wedding. Did you did you know that? I did not. Okay, I will tell you that uh, uh, Jerry and I got to know it. We were both in the Air Force, and uh, we entertained as entertainers in the Air Force, and uh, we got to know each other. And when it was over, we started working nightclubs, and, and Jerry uh, Jerry and I became very close friends. And uh, uh, he, uh, and I will tell you right now, he is he was ten times funnier than his brother, Dick. You know, I was going to say that. Him. I agree. Oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no comparison. And you know, and Dick would would agree to it uh, upon occasion mm-hmm. because uh, he, Jerry was this. Uh, he was out there, and he was certainly funny. And he uh, in a nightclub, he was unbeatable. Yeah. Right. And uh, so he uh, he became uh, best man at my wedding, and uh, fortunately, uh, well, he passed away. Yeah. Uh, and I still have the same life, fifty years later. I, and that's incredible, and it just goes to show you're you're the nicest guy, and you can you look like the nicest guy. I mean, I mean. Well, I am. There you are. There you are. <laughs> Even though you're not, and, and I'm very modest. Very modest. <laughs> Even though you're not bitter because you're the slowest rising comedian. Hey, I mean, he did something right. You were on. Comedian. You were the oldest now, but you did something right. You were on Carson twelve times, I think, and called over every time. So. Actually, six times. Oh, okay. But you could you could say I was on twelve. 12. I was on I was on Merv Mer Griffin forty four times. Oh wow! Holy cow. Wow! Wow! So See, I didn't I didn't I, I I didn't want to go to New York and you know it was too much trouble. But a couple of times I did fly to New York and did the Carson show and uh, and that's yeah I did six of them. Wow. Yeah. 
So do you do any, like the uh, the Andy Griffith reunion things, the Mayberry Days or whatever? Yes, like, yes. You know? I'm, in my, I'm in my seventh year of doing, their, they have a big, what they call a Mayberry reunion mm -hmm. at, in a little town where Andy was born called, uh, oh, somewhere in North Carolina, Mount uh -huh. Airy, Mount Airy. Okay. Right. And they have, it's a four-day festival. They have 36,000 people come in this little town town i mean uh, you know to this day andy is still a legend and yes. people love him and and that each year they get a special guest that did the andy Griffith show and uh they feature them well now they're down to maggie peterson a uh, singer uh uh i dream of Jeannie. What, what what's her name barbara, barbara eden. eden yeah she she came so she did the Andy Griffith show, right. and uh, but everybody else is yeah. pretty well, well well gone. There's one other lady who played Don Knotts uh, girlfriend, uh, yeah, girlfriend, yeah. I, I can't think and, of her name, but, but yeah, but, uh, yeah, I can't either. Just kill me. <laughs> uh, but don't so don't don't play this in Mount Airy, okay? No. Okay, yeah, I won't she, do that. Uh, yeah, please, please. <laughs> so she, uh, uh, they, so I, I go there every year, and I'm going there in September. 21st or 25th. They also have one in the Midwest called Mayberry in the Midwest, mm -hmm. which is in, near Indianapolis. I go there every year, too. And I, I do a comedy and uh, ride in their parade, stuff like Very that. Very cool. Okay. You, you should write a book. Seriously, you've got so many great stories and you're such a legend. That's what everybody says. That's what everybody says. And, I'm and too busy. I mean, I, I'm too, I know. too uh, late. Well, I'm too late. <laughs> <laughs> and you must be the nicest guy because everybody you work with always work with you again because even like you mentioned Andy Griffith, you work with Don Knotts. We watched Gus last night, and <laughs> you were great. Oh, uh, so. Don, Don Knotts was uh, one of my closest friends. In fact, when he passed, I, I, uh, I was, this, I don't know what you call it, MC mm -hmm. at his memorial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, his wife asked me specifically because Don liked you so much. So yeah, he, was, he was a genius. You know, and I said, you can you can hope and you can pray, but there'll never be a character like uh, Don Knotts, Barney Fife, uh, and all of them. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Barney Fife again. Yeah. yeah. Well, so Ronnie, I, I still watch. Even. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say that that I I really can't tell you how much I appreciate you being on. I mean, I grew up watching. Hey, you. my pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And we wish you. I grew up watching me too. <laughs> Well, I started young. Come on, I started young. That is true. That so is I grew true. up with you. I, I hope. I hope yeah. that you've done so much. I hope the uh, residual checks are really good to you because <laughs> they should be. You know, I, I wish they were. Uh, uh, the only residual checks I get now are are the later shows I did, like Sanford and Son and and uh, 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 what's Golden Girls and things like that. Right. Because yeah. the early ones, the Gold Pile, all those, and Andy Griffith, you, the contract was for six runs. Yeah, and. I'd be I'd be a multi multi millionaire by right. the yeah I would I wouldn't be talking to you guys for trying out loud. Well, be, they, they must have appreciated the castle. they must have appreciated your worth because I, I know you you left Gomer Pyle to do Good Morning World and then you came back and then a lot of shows wouldn't yeah, even have right. you come back they must have really thought you were great that's true. yeah that's very friends true. Right. very friends well, and if you if you'd like to see me in my youth. Uh, I think uh, Gomer Pyle is on here in L.A. on the Me, Me Network. Me? Yes, yes it is. BTV? Yes. Yep. Every night at 9. So if I'm in the episode, you'll catch me around 9 tonight. There you go. I that's know a, I'll be there. That's how you make up those residuals. They ask you to do those those promotional things, like watch me on yes. BTV. Charge them $5 million. Oh, you're and then, right. You're absolutely you're, Yeah, that's right. That's how you get them. That's how you get them. <laughs> All right. Well, I've, I've enjoyed it. You guys are very professional and... Uh, I, I really enjoyed the encounter. Absolutely. Well, okay. coming Thank you. coming from one today. coming from one radio guy to another, and and don't forget to tell your fans about Good Morning Worlds on Amazon because I'm I'm just so happy. To I see will. It. Thank yeah. you, thank you I so much, Ronnie, uh, for joining us. It's been an honor, and I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Well, you two guys, and uh, I, I, we'll do it again sometime. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank bye -bye. you so much. Bye bye. Good night.